um, good afternoon, good evening, or whatever part of the country you are in. And uh, we have with us, as you can see, Max Sherman, who is um, here uh, representing Marine Frenchies, correct? Yes. Okay. So uh, I had the pleasure to talk to you several times, and it's yes. a pleasure to meet you for the first time. <laughs> nice to meet you too. Okay. So, and uh, I uh, wanted to s first uh, let people know who you are and what you do, maybe for Marine Frenchies, and what how you got involved with them. Okay. Well, I've been in the uh, food and cheese business for over 30 years wow. in San Francisco, you don't or look in the that Bay Area. Right? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm getting that old. You're kidding. Okay. Uh, and um, about seven and a half. Uh, actually, eight years ago, I met Jim Boyce, who mm -hmm. is the former owner of Marin French Cheese Company. Okay. Uh, Jim has since passed away, um, approximately a year and a half ago. Oh, sorry. And to hear that. it's very sad for all of us. Um, but um, so you have known him for a few years. I knew him for probably about fifteen years. But oh, wow. we began talking. Um, oh, I'd say about eight years ago about uh, his need for a sales and marketing manager. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so that's you. So, um, rolling fast forward, um, I became the uh, sales and marketing manager for Marin French Cheese Company, helped them build the business, um, uh, brought us to uh, national sales uh, across mm -hmm. the country. And unfortunately, uh, Jim became ill uh, with uh, cancer. And you, we. You were pretty much running things for him? Um, I, as a sales manager, I, I ran all the sales and, and marketing and a lot of the research and development and worked very closely with the cheese production manager. Okay. Uh, and uh, when Jim found out that uh, he was not going to be with us f for Much a long longer. time, um, he asked me to run the company for him. So for approximately a year and a half, I ran the company. I see. Until we uh, sold the property and the, the entire company to uh, the, Ria the Rians Group which is a French cheese uh, company. company. And uh, fortunately, they have a sister company named uh, Laura Chanel in oh. Sonoma. Okay. And so Laura Chanel actually bought us through the Rions Group. Okay. So now I'm back to where I started as the sales and marketing manager. All right. OK, so uh, so Laurel, uh, what's it called, Laurel? Laura. Laura. Laura Chanel Chef. Chanel Chef. Okay. Yeah. And, and so that company runs many cheese factories? Uh, just uh, just the two. Uh, Laura Chanel Chef has been in business for 25 years. Yeah. And uh, they were purchased by the Rions Group yeah. um, seven, seven and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. And their general manager, Marie Lassouvier, mm -hmm. uh, is now our general manager. So she runs both companies. Okay, perfect. So uh, tell me, how did Marine French get started? Like you said, over 100 years ago? 147 years ago, starting. By who? Jefferson Thompson. Jefferson oh, Thompson. Oh, okay. Is he French or American? American. And he came from Illinois. Oh. And actually came across the plains um, uh, to help out with a wagon uh, train crossing rivers because he had river crossing experience. Wow. <laughs> and uh, he came on the uh, Farley Farley uh, wagon train. Wow. And uh, he also thought maybe he could mine some gold because this is during the gold rush era. Okay. And he didn't find any gold, but he found uh, Petaluma. And uh, yes. he worked for some ranchers and making place. cheese. Yes, it's gorgeous. Uh, Rolling Hills, um, really yes, very, I saw very the pristine. Yes, very pristine. And uh, he ended up buying uh, 700 acres with 10,000 gold coins um, in the Hicks Valley area, mm -hmm. and that's where we are now. Oh, in 18, really? starting in 1865. My goodness! Yeah. And he said little by little he decided to maybe do several kinds of cheese little by little? He uh, started off with a California, he calls it a California fresh cheese, okay. which we believe is what we make today called breakfast cheese, which is a fresh brie type cheese. Okay. And he was selling that to Yerba Buena, which is now San Francisco. Okay. And in 1906, um, he started making camembert mm. um, because he learned how to make camembert from a, um, a Swiss man named Louis Cantal. And uh, he, Jefferson Thompson was a pretty innovative person. And instead of making small batches, he made large batches wow. and began selling it to uh, many friends, the Flood family, the Crocker family, the Farley family, very wealthy families in San Francisco, and even the Hearst family. We have records of Randolph Hearst buying our cheese and bringing it to the Hearst Castle. Wow. So, so basically, it's not a French guy who came to California and started a cheese factory. Not at all. Wow. We so make California brie and California camembert, kind yeah. of in a French style. Yeah, but it's uh, you copied the recipes? 
Well, the, res the recipe is, is, is a French-style recipe. Okay. Um, it um, the cultures are from Europe. Yeah. Um, so we have a what's called a camembert culture. It's kind of like a yeast or mold. Okay. And we have a specific brie mold. Which you should still do in 2012. Absolutely. In, in fact, probably better than, than in 18, <laughs> 18, uh, 90s, 1890s, of course. Yeah. Oh, wow. So basically, is there any French person behind the scene at this company? Well, there wasn't until now. Uh, our general manager is French. Okay. And Rian's group, uh, which is our parent company, of course, is, is owned by a Frenchman, Hugues Tripolat. Um, so uh, we are now an American company with a French name, Rouge Noir, uh, owned by a French company. Okay. But the beginnings were not French at all. Okay. So, so the general manager of... Sh Laura uh, Chanel. Laura Chanel is French. Is French, yes. And he bought the company. Uh, well, actually, it's a it's a woman. Uh, uh, oh, Marie the, Marie Le Soudier. Oh, and Marie. She's the general manager. And, and she bought the company. Right. She uh, as as the general manager, but the company is owned by the Rians Group. Okay. It's and a she, big group. It's okay. a big group. It's a group of uh, seventeen cheese uh, producers around the world. Very small cheese producers like us. Oh wow. And th this this took you off uh, track, or you kept on doing what you need to do? We are doing the same cheese in small batches. Um, if you were to come and visit us, you'd see yes, us I making. Yes, I did. Well, of course. Okay. You saw the twenty-gallon buckets. Mm -hmm. We make cheese at twenty gallons at a time, and eighteen eight-ounce cheeses come out of each bucket. Okay. So that's a small batch, okay. and we will continue doing that forever. We just have better technology. 18 types of cheese from uh, that? Eight, 18 uh, cheeses. So if we make a, a bucket, the yeah. bucket of... Uh, a bucket? Oh, is 18 make cheeses. 18 cheeses. And uh, you do if, several buckets per day? Uh, well, we do about four or 500 buckets per day. Oh, okay. We produce, um, uh, right now we're sometimes um, producing 4,800 gallons of milk per day. Uh, sometimes it's two days a week, sometimes it's six days a week. It, it depends on, on the needs of, of our 40 consumer. 40 gallons? So basically you also raise cows or you have the, the milk delivered? We, we buy our, our milk from local dairies. There's okay. approximately four local dairies within 25 miles. Okay. So we're supporting the, the, the small the farmers. Low, uh, because the small farmers around the Right. Uh, the smallest herd is 75. I think the largest is 250 head. And they deliver the milk? The milk is uh, picked up by one tanker. Mm -hmm. uh, and that tanker goes to the different uh, mm -hmm. dairies, and picks up the milk, the factory? and brings it out to the factory around midnight at night. And when you mix all these little manufacturer, I mean, uh, dairy uh, farms, mm -hmm. is the same taste? Uh, what well, does get mixed, and the beauty of that is we buy milk from a Jersey uh, mm -hmm. herd, mm -hmm. uh, from a Guernsey herd, and a little bit of Holstein. That changed so, the taste of the cheese. So the, the mixture is a perfect blend, we think, for, um, to make our camembert and brie. Oh, so you mix all the milks. Uh, we mix all those milks together. So you have the fat and the high protein from the Jerseys and the Guernseys, and the Holstein gives you a little more structure to, to hold the cheese together just to give it structure and, and, okay. and stability. But since it's the same grass, it's pretty much the same taste. Pretty much the same taste, yes. Yeah. We have so wonderful grass out there. It's, it's a, a wonderful area for agriculture. I agree. It's beautiful. Uh, you're lucky to work in that beautiful I, area. I am very lucky. Yeah. <laughs> Although you're on the road most of the time, right? Uh, 50% of the time, I'm traveling around the country trying to sell our cheese okay. and visiting customers and chefs. Like, yeah, chefs, restaurants, and maybe stores. Stores, uh, anyone who buy our cheese. That's great. Yeah. That's great. So um, tell me a little bit maybe about the cheese making. Uh, is, is it easy to make cheese? Well, it's a simple process, but there's a lot of work to it. Can you make cheese at home? Of course. Okay, so tell me how to make it. At home? <laughs> you, you know, tell me the, the process. You well, take the, the milk and then... Well, we start with raw milk. All our yeah, milk is raw. Yeah, and yeah. then we pasteurize it yeah. at about 165 degrees for 15 seconds. Okay. Just enough to kill the bad bacteria, but still maintain the flavor. Okay. Um, from there, we uh, move the milk um, into... Uh, the uh, starter tanks, okay. um, and then the milk, uh, we add a starter, which starts the coagulation, lowers the pH. Okay. At the same time, we're culturing these um, mole cultures, whether it's brie and camembert, okay. um, in a separate tank, yeah. getting them ready. We're actually raising the cultures, just like almost with bread, okay. when you're um, uh, raising your, your yeast. Yeah. It's a similar similar idea, different process, but okay. you're raising, so raising. you're raising the milk. Raising so the, 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 the cultures the, the in, culture. in, inside some milk. And that can be done at home, too. 
It can be done at home. You, you can buy packages of cultures. Okay. You can do that. Uh, or you can use buttermilk, from what I'm told. Okay. Uh, but I've never done that. Um, from there, um, the milk is poured into these 20-gallon buckets, okay. several and hundred. And then you stir. Um, and then we, add, then we add the brie or camembert culture into the milk. To give it that special taste. That special taste for camembert, special taste for, oh. for brie. And also the texture, too, because each one has oh, a little bit yes, different yes. texture. So, so that, that thing that you add is what makes the difference? That's the mocha, that makes a huge difference. And then this process took approximately 45 to 50 minutes. Okay. And then uh, about another 20 minutes later, we add in the, uh, it's called a microbial enzyme or a rennet. It's a non-animal rennet. Okay. And that finishes the coagulation. You've heard the story of curds and whey. Yeah. Well, we separate the, the curd from the whey, the okay. whey being the milky, uh, the, the watery oh, substance. Oh, and then you just take the hard stuff. And then, then the, uh, the curd sinks to the bottom. Okay. And then we s take off the whey. Uh, mm -hmm. We, we uh, siphon that off. And, okay. and then we sell that actually to pig farmers and, and Wh hay farmers. Whoever wants it. Whoever wants it. So we don't throw it away. Okay. Um, it, it goes to good use. Everything has a life cycle. Recycle? Yeah. Recycles. Okay. Um, and then um, after uh, the whey is taken out, then we take these buckets, usually two men, and they pour it into the eight, eight ounce molds or the one pound molds, uh, four ounce molds, mm -hmm. and the cheese will sit overnight. Mm -hmm. And a cheese approximately, I think it's three inches thick, yeah. will go down to about a, a half inch. Oh, it's it's it, it because of um, gravity and the moisture um, and the oh, yeah. way uh, going out. drying okay. out a little bit. Okay. From there, in the morning, uh, mm -hmm. we check uh, the, make sure the quality is there. We check the pH, uh, moisture level, and then we we brine it in a, in a big salt tank, salt okay. water tank. Okay. And it's it could, almost done now. It's getting c close to being done. Okay. Uh, we we salt them or brine them for twenty to thirty or fifty minutes. Okay. Then again, they come out. They sit overnight to drain a little bit more, mm -hmm. and they go into this phenomenal cellar that was hand dug in eighteen sixty five. And it, it sits. It's it sits there for two two days, because that first cellar has mold cultures that have been growing um, and changing it. for one hundred and forty seven years. So it's th they have their own their own environment down there. From there, it goes into a cooler room and stays there for eight days. Wow, and, and it grows. Whole, this and that's something going on and on and on. All and on. the time, there's something, and the cheese is always changing. And it go, goes through a, a very natural biological process. And then, what's beautiful, if you, you went, in, you did go into the yes, cellar, yes. and you saw how they were bloomy, mm -hmm. almost like cotton balls. Yeah. Really beautiful. Yeah. And then, once they're ready, after about ten days, then yeah. they go up the stairs and they get packed and and sold to. Chefs and people, yeah. whoever wants it. Yeah, and then the <laughs> store. Okay. So